Hey y'all! Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about the topic of fasted cardio. And which is better, fasted cardio or non-fasted cardio? So first, what is fasted cardio? Fasted cardio means that you are doing your cardio before you have eaten or drinking anything that has caloric value. So what a lot of competitors think is better for them to lose fat better or to oxidize more fat would be fasted cardio. They think, um, and I have seen this on Instagram, people think just because you're fasted, it means that you're able to dip into those fat stores and burn more fat because you haven't eaten yet. But this is not true and this is not the case because simply the body has multiple mechanisms to preserve energy. So with fasted cardio, what a lot of people don't think about is the fact that when you're fasted, you are possibly breaking down a lot more muscle tissue than you would be if you did um, cardio post-workout. So the benefits of fasted cardio, of possibly oxidizing more fat, which yes, it could be a possibility, is not worth the fat, the effects of losing muscle. So also with doing fasted cardio, you're not just going to oxidize more fat, lose more fat, because the body has those um, other processes that it does. So um, breaking down muscle tissue, gluconeogenesis, so the creation of glucose from other forms of energy. So fasted cardio is not better than cardio post-workout. Because also you have to take into account post-workout, you ate your post-workout, I mean you ate your pre-workout meal an hour or two beforehand, so you are already, you've already gone through your um, carbohydrate stores during your workout. Not all of the carbohydrate stores, but a lot of them. So when you go to do your post-workout cardio, you're still being able to dip into that fat loss, fat oxidation stage while preserving lean muscle tissue a lot better than if you did fasted cardio. Now, I don't know if you guys have checked out my podcast from Uplift Fit Nutrition on LIS cardio versus HIT cardio. So LIS is steady state and HIT is high intensity interval training. I did a podcast on that and how you can use different substrate levels. So utilizing more fat for fuel or carbohydrate for fuel based on HIT or less cardio. I did that and that is on my podcast, Uplift Fit Nutrition on SoundCloud and iTunes. But um, so for fasted cardio, there are no additional benefits for fasted versus post-exercise cardio. So if you choose to do fasted cardio because you think it works for you, which some people find that fasted cardio works for them just because of their um, time in the mornings or maybe it's just easier for them to get that done they can go harder um, that is when fasted cardio would be beneficial so if you can if you have more time in the morning to get that cardio done if you do better with fasted cardio um, that's when it would be better and more beneficial other than if you go post-workout and your energy is lower um, that's when fasted cardio might be better for you because you aren't able to give 110% post-workout for that cardio. But my suggestion, if you're going to do fasted cardio, is to don't do it fasted, so have some protein. Protein will not stop um, too much of the fat oxidation that um, occurs with cardio because you're not eating carbohydrates, so your body is not going into the carbohydrate stores. It um, has to use those lipid stores and then the protein for energy. Um, either use a protein source, so 25 grams of protein pre-fasted, or definitely use branched chain amino acids. So I am not a fan of fasted cardio. I am a fan of it if it works for you. I'm all about what do, what works for you and your lifestyle. But I just wanted to kind of clear the confusion on fasted cardio and help people stop from doing fasted cardio and losing all that hard-earned muscle tissue. Carbs! Hoo-ha! Another thing I wanted to talk about is carbohydrate type in regards to your diet and what is best. So, there are no such thing as good or bad carbs. So, 
all carbohydrates break down into monosaccharides, disaccharides, so they break down in the body to glucose. So regardless if you are having sucrose, you're having pure glucose, you're having fructose, those are going to break down into those different metabolites, so they're gonna break down into glucose for your cells. So your body really has no clue that you are eating um, a white potato or a sweet potato in regards to the glucose content. So with carbohydrates, yes, there are amazing sources that are great with more nutrient density or a less nutrient density. And they also affect your blood sugar levels at different values. And this is super important if you're diabetic, if you're pre-diabetic, if you really want to take control of your insulin response. So that is when carbohydrate type and timing and choice is essential. But if you are just a normal human being wanting to lose weight, just focus on getting half of your grains and your carbs from whole grains and then not worrying too much about the other half. Um, try and keep your sugar, of course, lower because um, sugar, even though it turns into glucose in the body, it, it does not have nutrients in it. So you're having a low amount of um, nutrient dense calories that could be more better used in like fruits, vegetables, other grains that have a lot more nutrients in them. So that's the reason I suggest keeping sugar low, but sugar is not the enemy. Carbs are not the enemy. They are only the enemy if you are insulin resistant. So insulin resistant, that means that your body does not respond well to the insulin response to eating carbs and you're not able to clear that from your glucose levels. And that can lead to a lot of other metabolic issues and so that's when you want to watch out for those type of carbohydrates because they can the insulin response can affect that but all carbs will metabolize into glucose and be digested by the body for energy so in regards to the best times for carbohydrate timing and type so I find that pre-workout a mixture of both um, fast digesting and slow digesting carbs. So like oatmeal, um, sweet potatoes, those would be slow digesting. And then like rice cakes, white rice, those would be fast digesting. Um, and of course like cereal with sugar and candy, that's all fast digesting. But um, the mixture of those is best for me for pre-workout. Some people do better with just fast digesting pre-workout. And then post-workout, um, you typically, if you are doing, say, endurance or more high-intensity training or even with weight training and you really want to make sure you fill those glycogen levels back up from training, which, by the way, if you're just weight training, you're only going to decrease your glycogen levels about 30 to 40 percent, so you don't have to, you're not depleting your body of glycogen and you don't have to worry about having carbs directly after, um, but if you want to take control of that um, insulin sensitivity response, you're best to eat your fast digesting carbs right after your workout. So I hope this is a little bit of information about carb timing and insulin sensitivity. With that, I can always do more videos for you guys, but I wanted to make this video short and sweet and my camera is about to die, so I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you comment below your questions, anything you want me to go over, and have a great day.